Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Obi. I am a researcher and a professor in AI ethics, cybersecurity, and data. So today I'll be answering some of the common questions that I get from professionals who want to make the leap or are thinking about transitioning into a career in AI ethics and governance. Are you ready? Let's jump right in. Question number one, what exactly is AI ethics and AI governance? This is a great place to start. Let's define some concepts really quickly. The researcher in me will not allow me to start describing something without first defining its terms. AI is a field of science where systems are trained, usually with data, to perform tasks that were previously thought to only be performed by us humans. Now, systems can perform some of these tasks and sometimes even better and faster. Ethics is a concept in philosophy that guides how we determine when an action is right or wrong. Note that it is different from morality, which can be based on culture or on a religion, in which case morality tells us what is wrong or what is right. The difference between ethics and morals is that ethics shows us how, which means the reasoning that we use to make the determination of what's right or what's wrong, while morality tells us exactly what's right or wrong. Now that we've defined AI and ethics, let's talk about AI ethics. AI ethics works with the recognition that there might be some risks. That means there might be some rights or some wrongs with AI performing these tasks that we just talked about. So AI ethics is primarily about making those determinations that ensure that AI systems are designed, built, and used in ways that are fair, transparent, accountable, and respect human rights. AI ethics revolve around the questions that we ask. That is, the determinations that minimize the risks that AI can create, not just for the individual who is the object of use, that is, the AI is used to make judgments that might affect the person, but the individual or the company actually using the AI to perform tasks. Now, an AI governance is a structural guardrails that are put in place to manage those AI risks. For example, those guardrails could include some policies, could include some compliance, some controls, risk registers, and responsible teams. It's the how and the who of overseeing AI use. And AI compliance, that's just one part of governance. It's making sure we're following laws and regulations like EU AI Act or New York Bias Audit Law. A quick way to think of these terms and categorize them is to think of AI ethics as the why. Why did this happen? Why are we doing this? And think of governance as the how. How do we ensure? And then think of compliance as the must. We must do the following. Note that compliance is not the same thing as governance. One encompasses the other. Now let's move on to question number two. Do I need to be technical to get into this space? The short answer is not necessarily. AI governance is multidisciplinary. So if you're familiar with cybersecurity, it's similar. In cybersecurity, yes, there are roles that are highly, highly technical, but there are also risk analysts, policy advisors, HR specialists, lawyers, and finance folks. All of them bring a valuable perspective to cybersecurity, even though they're not traditionally technical. Back to AI, you will need enough technical understanding to know how an AI system generally works. It's like knowing how a car engine works without having to be a mechanic. If you're going to be working in an automobile industry as a governance person who asks the why, the how, and the must questions, you should probably be able to recognize when something is wrong or something is off with a car and then ask the right questions. So it is with AI. So being able to understand how it works so that when something is off, you'll be able to identify it really quickly. Question number three, 
what kinds of laws or what kind of laws and guidelines or frameworks should I be familiar with? So this is a great question. There are three big ones to start with. The EU AI Act. This is the first comprehensive legal framework for AI. It categorizes AI systems into risk levels and assigns responsibilities and penalties based on that. So you need to know that. Then there's a NIST AI risk management framework. This is US-based, and this is a voluntary framework that's designed to help organizations manage AI risks. It's been adopted widely even beyond the US. The third one is the New York Local Law 144, often called the bias audit law. If you're using any automated employment decision tools in New York, you need an external bias audit. So that law captures that. Now, even if you don't live in these regions, you don't live in the EU, you don't live in the US or even New York, your systems, your company's systems may be affected if they operate in these areas or use tools that do. Question number five. What are the actual skills I need to succeed in AI ethics or governance? Here are four core skill areas you want to focus on. Now, there's so many others, but these are the core ones that when I look at a lot of the job requisitions and requirements, these are the four that are prominent. The first one is AI technology. Learn how machine learning and neural networks work. In this case, don't just learn it like, you know, most people do, which is just reading something or watching somebody tell you something. Learn it with a mindset of teaching it to another person, especially teaching it to a young person, an eight-year-old person. If you can do that, you've learned it. The second one is risk management. Learn how to identify, evaluate, reduce risks in AI systems. The third one is ethical reasoning. Study philosophical frameworks like utilitarianism and deontology so that you can think through trade-offs that you'll often encounter whenever you're dealing with any kind of risk management. The fourth one is policy fluency. Be comfortable reading compliance documents, creating internal guidelines, or reviewing vendor compliance reports. The last one that's actually the, I would say, a very important aspect. I mean, all the others are also important, but this one is what will let you even start talking about the rest and whether you know the rest or not is communication. Learn how to communicate with both technical teams and non-technical executives. This translation skill is powerful and important. In my next video, I will break down each of these five, the how and where to build these skills, as well as how to practice your articulation of your understanding and your experience in each one. So stay tuned. Question number five, can you explain the difference between a bias audit and an AI assessment? Absolutely. A bias audit looks specifically at whether an AI system disadvantages a particular group, whether it is race, gender, or age. It is a targeted approach that is focused on just looking for those biases. An AI assessment is a little broader. It might include bias testing or bias audit, but it also checks for performance, how the AI system performs, it checks for fairness, it checks for explainability, for robustness, and alignment with laws and policies. It also assesses the impact of an AI system before the system is actually deployed. So think of this like a bias audit is one piece of a pie or pizza, and an AI assessment is a whole pizza. Question number six, I don't feel qualified. What if I learn all of this and still feel inadequate? Now, that feeling is totally normal. Even AI engineers feel behind sometimes. If you do a quick search on Google for a top 10 fears of technologists or programmers, the first two are usually these. Number one is fear of obsolescence. 
where they feel like the field is constantly moving and staying relevant becomes a concern. So welcome to the club. The field is moving very fast, but here's what I say to myself, and I will share this nugget with you as well, is don't chase the tools, chase the principles. For example, today there's so many tools coming up for running AI auditing and governance. AWS has one, IBM has one, and the list goes on. Which would you learn? You know, do you learn all of them or do you learn one? Can you afford to do all of it? Can the money, the time, the effort? If so, more grace to your elbow. Otherwise, focus on learning the principles surrounding AI auditing and governance. Learn the core concepts that must be addressed in auditing an AI system or governing an AI system. Then choose just one of those tools. Any one of them would do. And once you choose it, just rest on the knowledge that you've acquired in that one skill. Anchor yourself in a guiding question like this. How do I help my organization identify and reduce AI-related risks? This question will guide what you read, what you listen to, who you listen to, and what skills you need to develop. Question seven, what kind of courses or certifications should I take to get started? Now, you're in luck. There's a lot out there. While I teach a course in AI ethics, a graduate course at UNT, and this is a shameless plug, uh, you may not need to enroll in a university program. Now, there are a few places that you might start just to start. There's LinkedIn Learning and there's Coursera. You can look for courses on responsible AI, AI risk, fairness, and ethics. There's also the Montreal AI Ethics Institute, this is a great place for thought leadership and some reports. Now, and in terms of certifications, there are so many out there right now. Doing a search for AI governance certification will provide a few options. AI GP is known, and so that's one that will show up on top of the list, but it can be a bit pricey. Now, most of the providers in this space started within the last two to three years. So there's no gold standard yet. Find what fits your learning style and budget. And remember that core guiding question or principle, how do I help my organization identify and reduce AI related risks? Asking that question as you review the course objectives of each course of certification will help you determine the best fit for you and your goals. Question eight. What industries are hiring for AI governance and ethics role? Now let's talk hiring. Now companies like the big ones like Google, Microsoft, Meta, IBM, they all have responsible AI team. In fact, I analyzed a Microsoft responsible AI job description a while back. You could probably find it on my channel. Healthcare and pharma, these also need responsible AI teams. Financial services, they use AI in lending, in credit scoring, in fraud detection. Ethics is also key in government and regulation agencies. They are writing the rules and they need experts on staff. So these roles are growing. Question number nine, what if I already have a full-time job in a non-tech field? Can I still make this transition? Yes. In fact, your domain experience is your superpower. Let's say you're in HR, you're in finance, you're in healthcare, you're in logistics. AI is impacting all these areas. When you layer in your ethical and governance oversight, your industry knowledge becomes essential. Start by participating in cross-functional AI projects in your organization where possible. Offer to draft policy recommendations. Volunteer in ethics committees, again, if that's possible. If these are not possible, another thing that you could do is put the AI in your browsers and social media feed to good use. Allow it to curate topics on AI governance and ethics so that you're following the trends in this area. How do you do that? Just search AI governance and ethics keywords a few times today and tomorrow. And voila, these companies will start sending these topics your way. All right, that wraps up today's Q&A. The big takeaway, 
AI ethics and governance needs you, not just technologists, not just philosophers, you with your background, your values, your commitment to doing the right thing. So don't let a lack of tech degree stop you. Start small, stay curious, lead with purpose. If this helped you, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and drop your questions in the comments. I might cover them in the next session. Thanks for watching.